Hey, good evening. Welcome back to my little gardening show. We've got some time this evening. We're going to um, transplant some seedlings. We're not going to do everything at once. I've got a whole lot. Uh, I've got a tray that's filled that we'll probably do some of that tonight and some tomorrow. Again, one of the mistakes that um, you can make early on is thinking you got to do a bunch of stuff all at once. Um, it ends up becoming stressful and you know tedious and all that. And it's not supposed to be that way. At least I don't want it to be that way. And so... You know, the plants aren't going anywhere. It's not like they're growing super fast where you're going to run into problems uh, with these type of seedlings that, or seeds that we're growing, these, this cold weather stuff. So we've got plenty of time. We've actually kind of taken our time all this week to kind of do a little bit at a time. Did three quarters of a tray uh, the other day. Now we're going to finish up this, this particular tray. So um, we'll get started here and go through the process and um, hopefully you guys find it uh, educational. So let's get started. I'm actually going to finish out uh, this first tray over here uh, that I originally started. As you can see I've got uh, about three quarters of it already transplanted and spaced out and um, these have been these were the uh, sprouts out of the Ziploc bags and uh, toilet paper. They're pretty far along these are some that we transplanted uh, about two nights ago, and we're going to try to do the rest uh, tonight. So this variety, this is our uh, red mammoth cabbage. Had two rows, plenty of sprouts. So what I'm doing right now, again, is just using my little tool, uh, homemade little uh, wedge here, and I'm kind of digging out the sprouts, kind of separating them out, and we're going to kind of examine the uh, the root stack. The stems and the uh, the foliage, the, uh, the seed leaves, and see which ones are uh, you know are the most vigorous. Kind of what we'll be looking for is a uh, kind of thicker, straighter stems. We're gonna be looking for a symmetry in the seed leaves yeah, as well as size. And then, of course, the most important um, quality we're looking for is a large. Uh, root ball or root stock. Ideally, that's uh, about twice as long as the top growth, as it's going to be the roots that support um, future growth. If it's got a, a strong root system, it's got a really good chance of surviving, even if the uh, the top foliage isn't as developed yet. It could have great foliage, but if it's got a tiny root, <clears throat> um, small root, it's not going to do that well. So we'll uh, pry these out and separate them out. All right, so we've dug out our plants. And I was kind of separating them as we went along. These are the ones that we're not really going to use. You know, a lot of these are, you know, they're okay. They're just not as vigorous. And so I pulled out some examples just to kind of show you the some of the extremes. Like, for example, we've got this one. And it's kind of small. The stem, there's not a whole lot of growth there. Kind of smaller rootstock. It's got roots. They're kind of spread out, but smaller, smaller foliage. So let's sit that there. Then we've got some that are like this. Um, I don't know if you can see that root. I'll try to get that. But not only does it have you know, a good clump of roots, but look how long that tap root is. You know, it's longer than my hand. Top growth's pretty decent. The stem's pretty steep, decent. So between the two, this one's definitely got a better chance of thriving. Here's another example. Again, you know, the roots on that are okay relative to the top growth. There's actually two there. I mean, completely separated out, but to look at you can look at the top, it's just all kind of stunted. This one on the side is totally, um, it just didn't sprout very well. And again, if we look to contrast that, here's one that's had roots that grabbed quite a bit of the grow mix. Decent top growth, decent stem. Again, from these here, the ones that I'm going to pick out to put in a tray, I only need uh, 18 that I'm going to kind of move forward with. 
So I'm going to be kind of looking at, again, the root stocks are all pretty similar. So if the root stocks are, or the little mass of roots are similar, then it comes down to kind of the, the stems and the top growth, you know, how straight the stems are, how much top growth there is, is there anything messed up about that? And also, are there any that are further along? Like, is there a little bit of a start of like the true leaves in between kind of the, uh, the crux of the, uh, the seed leaves? So we're gonna go through, we're gonna um, add a little bit of mix here, make our holes, and then we'll pot up the rest of the, uh, the plants. We should have 18 uh, that we picked out when we're done here. All right, so we used our little dibber there. We drilled our holes, and we're gonna start putting plants in. Now, when you're handling the seedlings, you wanna try to grab it by the little seed leaf there. You don't wanna put any pressure, or very, if you can avoid it, you don't want to put pressure on the stem. You don't want to damage that at all, as that's kind of the uh, the lifeline for the plant, you know, that transports the nutrients from the roots to the leaves, you know. And uh, I don't know if you can see the start of those true leaves there uh, in the middle between the seed leaves, but we're going to, this one's looking pretty good, so we're going to set that right there in the middle. So I'll, I'll lay it down so that the roots are there at the hole, and then just take my finger and kind of push it back, push it in the rest of the way. Kind of nudge it in, like so. We'll do that with the, the rest of the rows, and then uh, we'll water them in. All right, so we've got them all potted up, or set. Now the other thing we're going to do in watering these in, I've got a, a organic fertilizer. It's like got fish emulsion, um, some other nutrients in it. Uh, the main component though is nitrogen and that's important because a lot of times when anytime you transplant seedlings or you know you're putting plants in the ground they're going to experience some transplant shock and so to minimize that and help kind of give them a boost to uh, help get through that initial shock and you know so they continue the uh, growth pattern it's important to give them a shot of uh, you know nitrogen fertilizer. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, well, Samuel kind of busted in on us here. You planting some more plants there, bud? Yes. What are these? That is the red mammoth cabbage. Ooh. Ooh. Red cabbage? Yeah, red cabbage. Uh, as far as a liquid fertilizer, um, Dr. Earth uh, products, they've got good product here. It's a triple three. You know, it's not real high power, but it's got a lot of nutrients in it. Uh, it's, you know, in the three, typically it's uh, nitri nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, I think are the big three nutrients that are in most uh, commercial fertilizers and stuff. Including this, uh, this is an organic solution against fish emulsion. It doesn't smell real good. Yeah, it smells terrible. Uh, but anyway, we've got that mixed into our sprayer there. We're going to use that again to uh, give our plants a little boost. I don't have this, I've got this sprayer kind of um, set so it's not set at like a straight stream, it's diffusing. And we're going to go ahead and hit the rest of these plants too because everything is kind of dry. The other thing you'll notice, um, you know, some of these I hit, they just kind of went over because their stems aren't very strong. You like that one? One of the challenges of starting uh, seedlings indoors is that, um, you know, they do need some, they need to be uh, hardened off or toughened up. And part of that process is exposing it to, uh, exposing the seedlings to like wind and the sun and uh, temperatures. Uh, the wind is important because um, as the seedlings are being blown around, you know, you don't want it, you don't want to set out a new tray like this and like really high speed winds it's going to tear everything up and break your stems but you do want to uh, expose them to some you know either put a fan down here to kind of uh, oscillating fan to to hit them to strengthen the stems it actually stimulates the plants to grow um as they hit, get some resistance which plant do you think is the biggest i mean well, the one, one of these in here but the other thing you can do um 
And some of these are a little laggy where maybe I didn't have the grow light low enough. That's another problem that you can run into. If the lights aren't low enough and they're having to reach for the light, they'll get leggy and fall over. And you can you can help that by repotting them up and surrounding them, um, you know, planting them deeper to help them grow out of that. But if you don't have an isolating fan, what you can do is you can take your hand and run it over uh, the seedlings, kind of like pet your plants, right? And they'll respond to that. It'll actually strengthen the stems. So as you come down here and check on them, you can run your hand over the seedlings. You know, not, again, you're not like you know karate chopping your plants, but you're running your hand over there to uh, stimulate the plants so that they'll grow. I mean, they're, they are growing, but it, it helps them. Again, oscillating fan helps them too. Uh, and then once these are a little bigger, you know, we'll be setting these trays outside to actually uh, endure some of the elements. They'll be exposed to the wind. Uh, more importantly, they'll be exposed to actual sunlight. Careful with that, bud. Um, and we'll do that in doses where it'd be a couple hours initially each day, and then we'll gradually up the time in direct sunlight. If we do too much, too fast, then we'll get sun scald where the leaves will actually bleach out white and um, it'll kill the plant. It can really damage the plants. So a lot of factors there. Uh, I mean, some of these could be avoided if, you know, we were direct sowing. You know, that's why there's some crops that you just direct sow, plant seed in the ground, outside, and as they grow, you know, they get acclimated to everything because they're growing in those conditions. You know, if the weather was warm enough, we could do some of that. But for a lot of this cold weather stuff, you have to start it indoors in kind of artificial uh, conditions. Okay? Yeah, artificial conditions. And then, um, you know, get them to the point where you can get them outside and expose the stuff. Uh, I could also have them in a greenhouse, which I do want to use my greenhouse uh, some this spring. Move stuff out there, start seeds out there so that, you know, I won't have to do as much of the hardening off process because the, the seedlings would be exposed to direct sunlight early on, as opposed to being under grow lights for, you know, four to six weeks and then trying to get them, you know, accustomed to the sun over, you know, a couple days' time. Doesn't take long. You know, a couple days, three, four days, they're, they'll they get used to the direct sunlight um, if you're real diligent about setting them out. Uh, the wind is the other factor again, so hopefully we can toughen these up as they grow. You know, I'm going to start running my hand over them to stimulate them, and we'll kind of go from there. So. Hey, don't you do this. All right, bud, well, we got a whole other tray to do. Are you ready? Look at this. Lots we're and lots already. of plants. All right, bud, let's get going on this. Till next time. Happy gardening. Bye.